Good afternoon, this is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. We are going to begin Chapter 5 in 1 John. And let's not forget, we are reading Through the Bible Commentary Series by J. Vernon McGee. All right, 1 John Chapter 5. Theme, God is life, victory over the world, assurance of salvation. God is life. In this chapter, we have, become, we have come to the last major division of this very wonderful little book. In the first part of this epistle, we saw that God is light. In the very extensive center section, we saw that God is love. The subject of this final chapter is God is life. Victory over the world. In these five First five verses, John talks about victory for the believer over the world. The world here is the cosmos, that is, the world with all of its organizations, all of its governments, all of its selfishness, its greed, its sorrow, its sickness, and its awful sin. John is going to say that it is possible for the child of God to have victory right down here over this world. Whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. First John chapter 5, verse 1. God is life, and that life comes through being born of God. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. That is the method. This is how one is born again. John makes it very clear here and in the opening of his gospel, that you become a child of God through simple faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But as many as received him, to them gave he power, the exuciation power, the right, the authority, to become the sons of God, even to them that don't do any more nor less than simply believe on his name. John chapter 1 verse 12 of the gospel. This means that when you trust Christ, you trust who he is as well as what he did. What he did has no value if he is not who he said he was. Again, I must say that the virgin birth is very essential. Who is this that died for the sins of the world? It was not an ordinary man who did that because an ordinary man is sinful himself and could not even die to obtain his own salvation. He could die only a judgment death, being eternally separated from God. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. It is faith which produces the new birth. Once you have been born again, how do you know that you have been born again? Do you have some great overwhelming experience? Do you enter some ecstatic estate? Not necessarily. Some people do, I am told, but that is not the usual procedure. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And every one that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. When you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you are born again. And God becomes your heavenly father. He is God the father and he becomes your heavenly father. If he is your heavenly father, you are begotten of him. Then you will love him. But it doesn't stop there. You are also going to love the one who is begotten of him. In other words, you're going to love other of God's little children. John has said this before, and he has said that it is not something new with him. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 11, we read, For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And the Lord Jesus said, "This By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for the other. John chapter 13. Verse 35, have love one to another. This expression, born of God, is very, very important. Being born of God 
has it anything to do with the fact that you have joined a church or gone through a ceremony? If you are born of God, I hope you have joined a church and that you take part in the ordinances of your church. But following certain rituals does not make you a child of God. The important thing is, are you born of God? Have you been born again? You are born again when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And the proof of it is that you love God. You love your Father. He begat you. And you are going to love his other children because they are your brothers and sisters. This cannot be confined to a certain denomination, church, race, clique, or group. The one who is born again will love others who are born again. This is the epistle on how you can have the assurance of your salvation. And all along, John has been giving to you some of the evidences are a child of God. Number one, if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that every one that doeth righteousness is born of him. First John chapter two verse twenty nine. A child of God will practice righteousness in his life. This does not mean that righteousness is the unusual thing, the abnormal thing, or that once in a while you practice it. It is be it is to be the practice of your life. You will slip and fall sometimes, but righteousness will be the practice of your life if you are his child. Number two, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. First John chapter 3 verse 9. A child of God will not practice sin. He will not live in it, revel in it, or make it his life. The lifestyle of a sinner is sin. He lives in sin all the time, and you don't expect him to do differently. We all lived in sin until we came to Christ. Number three, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. First John chapter four verse seven. A child of God will love other Christians. This is another test that will give assurance to you that you are born of God. Do you love other Christians? Number four. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith verse 4 a child of god will overcome the world number 5 we that whosoever we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not but he that is begotten of god keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not a child of god keeps himself from satan two of the evidences Two of the birthmarks of a child of God are given right here in this chapter. We will discuss these last two in more detail as we come to them. John is going to emphasize certain tests of true sonship, love, obedience, and truth. No one can quarrel with these words. Love, obedience, and truth are the marks of the child of God. Amen. And I'm going to end that reading right there. Next time we will go to verse 2 in chapter 5 of First John. I love you all so very, very much. Keep your eyes on Jesus and your nose in the book, which is the Word of God. And embed the Word of God upon the tablets of your hearts, so you will not sin against God. Until next time, be blessed, each and every one. Bye-bye.